Tim Panasic for Gibbons Motor Toys. Today we're going to talk the Kingfisher 1975. So the 1975 has been in the Kingfisher lineup for many years. It was uh, halted in 2018 because the 1875 pretty much had all the features that the 1975 did. The 1875 grew and uh, they were both powered by the Mercury Sport Jet, and uh, therefore the 1975 took a couple of years off, or I guess a year and a half off. In uh, 2020, the 1975 came back late in the year, but it's a new 1975. Uh, the main difference is that it's, uh, well, there's actually two main differences. Number one is the power, which we'll talk about in a minute. And number two is that the 1975 is now available in two versions. So it's available in what we call the X9 package, which is a nine stringer bottom, as well as a box stringer bottom. So the difference between the two is primarily just the, uh, the thickness and the material that's on the bottom of the hull. Uh, the boat overall in length is uh, 21 feet if you go to the back of the swim platform, which gives us a 19 foot hull. As far as the construction of the two boats, this is the X9. And with the X9, what you have is pretty much all the very same features that we have in our 1775 Extreme Duty. So what we've got is we've got a one piece bottom, quarter inch bottom, sorry, a quarter inch bottom, and then we've got half inch full UHMW. So right from the bow to the stern, full width, and in the keel, it's actually doubled as well. On the outside of the hull, you got one, two, five sides, and then you've got another quarter inch plate, as you can see, welded on the bottom section, and that's also on the inside of the hull. As we move to the back of the boat, of course, we've got the Kingfisher preflex hull design with our folds in the hull to give you added strength without adding extra weight. The back of the boat, this has got the optional ultra deck on the swim grid, which gives you nice traction, whether you've got shoes on, bare feet, makes it easier to get to your easy clean. You also have access here to get at the uh, turbine 309 pump so your access port is easy to get at in the water if you do end up with any debris in your impeller. This boat's got the optional uh, SDR so that's the split duct reverse uh, bucket. What that does is it gives you a much higher thrust in reverse. Uh, this has got a uh, stainless steel it's an optional stainless steel A impeller in it. And then it's also got the mechanical trim tabs in the back. And then you can see it's got our extreme heavy duty easy clean as well as the full UHMW with the large reverse chines on the hull. The interior of the 1975, whether it's the X9 or the standard 1975, is there's one configuration, and that is what you're looking at here. So it's available with the side bench seats. And then this has got the optional carpeted jump steps. These work really good for stepping up, getting to the back of the boat. You can also get these with padded cushions and added seats if you like as well. They're easily removable. And then to get access to your engine compartment, of course, we got a flip up doghouse here. Really easy to service and get at the engine. Uh, the 1975 has a built in 40 gallon fuel tank, and that's in the stern of the boat. So that's kind of unique in the industry. We've got a battery here, but you can see the fuel tank here, and it comes up and over and on both sides of the transom. There is room for dual batteries there. We also add a battery switch that's standard at uh, Gibbons Motor Toys so that uh, when you're away from your boat, you shut that switch off. You don't have to worry about uh, your batteries going dead. As far as the Inmar EcoBoost 2.3 liter engine, this is uh, working very well. It's 310 horsepower. It's 350 feet of torque. What's really important is that it makes almost 300 foot pounds of torque at just over 2,600 RPMs. The boat will perform well at pretty much any RPM above 26, 2700 RPMs, depending on the load in the boat. And it's going to be very, very fuel efficient and also very quiet and vibration free. 
As far as uh, weight, it's 500 pounds and that's wet with oil and coolant. So we got the performance of a V8 with the uh, weight of just a little bit more than what a sport jet would have been. Ease of maintenance is pretty good. You got an easy uh, spot here to drain the oil, easy fill, easy access to uh, your cooling system. There is a filter on here. You may not see that, but there's a very easy to get at fuel strainer or a strainer here for your water. If you get debris picked up in the water for draining in the winter time, there's basically a drain hose right here. You drain the, uh, the filter and uh, that's pretty much all you got to do. Notice there's four cup holders that are built into the top of this dog house, which is very convenient. The other thing that Kingfisher does is on our storage trays, they put this nice rolled lip here, and that's just more comfortable. If you bump into that, you can step on it. It's smooth on the, uh, you can be in bare feet. You can step up on there to get up on a dock or whatever. Um, this is optional, the carpeted uh, side storage trays, which is nice. Uh, if you put fishing rods or any kind of tools or anything in there, paddles, they're pretty much uh, vibration free at that point. The other thing, we showed you the extra quarter inch aluminum on the outside of the boat. You can also see that extra quarter inch plate on the inside. These are 36 inch storage bench seats. Again, nothing but storage there. As far as the 18 inch seat boxes underneath the driver's and passenger seat, these are convenient in the fact that they are dry storage. Notice the lip of this top tray goes over top the box. These boxes are sealed on the bottom. Anything you put in there is going to be dry storage. So you got that on both the passenger and the driver's side. This has got our Fishmaster XL seat on it. These seats do swivel. However, I find that uh, lots of times you can leave the seat even like this. You could sit sideways in it. You can be navigating here, talking to the rest of the crew in the boat. Or if you like, you can always just put it at an angle like this and it gives you lots of uh, space without having uh, anything impeding how you sit in the seat or if you want to quickly stand up. We've got the handrails on the windshield here, which is nice. You can have literally three or four people standing up here. The dash has a nice large surface. You could put up to a nine inch sonar up here. This has got the optional Inmar digital display. So this is gonna tell you exactly how much fuel you're burning, your engine temperature, oil temperature, all the vital information. This has got a binnacle mount control. Again, it makes it very easy to use this control when you're standing up. Glove box, nice large glove box again. We've got these dams that are welded on here. Again, you can pl place stuff up here. It's not gonna fall off the dash, so it makes it usable, usable space. Two more cup holders here. We've also got a dam here on the side. So again, you could put things on the dash. They're not gonna slide and fall off. This has got the optional heater in it. So you got two vents down here, two vents blowing on the windshield and nice finished storage up there to store all your, again, dry goods. The drop bow is like all the rest of our Kingfisher drop bows. It's self bailing. There's drain holes in the corners. The nice part about this is you're parked on a beach. Everybody gets in here with dirty shoes. They can leave all their sand and mud in here, throw a pail of water everything flushes out. This is anchor and rope storage in here. You notice that it's got this hole here. The nice part about that is you can have your rope anchor out of the boat. You can have your excess rope in there. It just comes out here. You can tie it to your cleat. It's just easy to deal with. It keeps the rope and everything out of the way. A couple other features with the drop bow is that there are tie points here. So if you want to secure jerry cans or anything up here, you can tie ratchet straps to these corner points. They also have them in the corners on each side, there and there, so that gives you tie down points. This has got dual windshield wipers on it, which are optional. This has got uh, optional tinted glass. Uh, like all our heavy gauge welded aluminum boats, the durability of the windshield, you're not going to move it. As far as our stand up top, it's a six foot top. 
We have a nice wide opening in the center. So again, if you're in foul weather, you can actually close this, open this one zipper. As the driver, you can kind of pop your head out here and keep everybody else in the boat dry. The 1975 Kingfisher is really intended for those that uh, want to primarily run river. Whether it's the 1975 or the 1975 X9 is really going to depend on your admission and your adventure and just uh, where you want to go. Obviously, the difference being that the X9 just has more reinforcements and it's just going to take more of a beating in shallow waters and with rocky terrain. For those, you know, who this boat isn't for, this boat's not going to be the, for the person that wants to spend all their time out on a lake. It's a 10 degree bottom, which uh, gives you good shallow water capabilities. It still gives you very good steering and handling. We feel that it gives the best overall uh, performance for a shallow water boat. But as far as out in a lake, it's going to be a rougher ride. Uh, again, though, if you want to use it in a lake once in a while, uh, ski tow ring. It's going to pull skiers, it's going to pull tubers, but you can also do those sports on rivers when you find the right section of water. So for those people wanting the latest in technology with the uh, most modern power option, very good fuel economy, quiet vibration free experience, this is going to give it to you. Remember to uh, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you'd like to see uh, more videos like this.